My name is Sebastian Bagley, and in this video, I'll share my journey of creating a thrust vector control mount. It's been a challenging process with ups and downs, but I'm excited to show you how I got there. First, I designed a simple gimbal to change the position of the rocket motor. Here's the first iteration of my design. Looking back, it was definitely a primitive design and not well thought out, but we all start somewhere, right? Despite my concerns with the design, I decided to give the first design a static fire test, mainly to see if the small servos could manage gimbling the motor. Overall, the test was successful, and it proved that it was possible to gimbal the rocket motor with a small 9 gram servo. Despite this success, I knew this design wouldn't work in a real rocket, so I scrapped it and started anew. After realizing the flaws in my first design, I moved on to the second iteration, but it turned out to be even worse. The single point of contact with the motor mount wasn't nearly enough. Finally, after several hours, I created the third iteration of the design. Although it wasn't perfect, it was a significant improvement from the previous versions. This was the first iteration that I used in a real rocket. On, this might work. Unfortunately, during the first launch with the third design, the rocket spun out of control immediately. That was disappointing, but not entirely unexpected. I decided this mount wouldn't quite cut it, and moved on to a new design. After making more improvements, I created the fourth iteration of the design. It was better than the previous designs, but still not perfect. This was where I started to have some success. The design was small and effective, giving me great control over the position of the gimbal. The rocket spun out of control during the fourth flight, although, after analyzing the video, I caught the beer correcting the wrong direction. I originally had it in my head that we wanted the rocket motor facing down as much as possible, as we wanted to ro the rocket to go up. It made intuitive sense to me. Instead, what we needed was to correct the opposite direction, rotating the rocket back upright. With my current code, the gimbal is actually making the situation worse. With that lesson in mind, I corrected my code, and the next flight was much more successful. While it wasn't a perfect launch, it was a step in the right direction. The rocket was overcorrecting, and I quickly fixed that in the code. The next launch was successful, and the rock was correcting pretty well. It reached a much higher height than the previous launches. Unfortunately, the rocket had no parachute, and was totally destroyed by the fall. I used that as an opportunity to redesign the rocket, both adding a parachute as well as making the mount better. My new rocket used a clear tube with a slightly smaller diameter, as I thought it would be cool to see how the rocket was correcting. It also used smaller servos mounted radially around the motor. At the time, I was very happy with the design. I launched the new design twice, and the first attempt was fairly unsuccessful. But I learned from my mistakes, and the second launch was much more successful, and this time it had a parachute. However, while the new mount looked great, its response time was too low for my purposes. I'm not sure if the problem was with the servos, my code, or something else entirely, but I decided to go back to the fourth iteration of my design, changing it slightly to fit the new body tube. The last launch of the rocket was an impressive sight. Despite being a tad heavy, the rocket ascended in a nearly straight trajectory until the end. This might not have appeared remarkable, yet without the mount, the rocket would have tipped over immediately. The gradual ascent rate of the rocket added to the NASA-like launch experience. Overall, I am satisfied with the outcome of the project, but there is always room for improvement in the future.